In this video, we are going to evaluate a sum taken from part number 1951. 1 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 10, adding up to infinity. All fractions in the series are of the form 1 over a number that has remainder 1 when divided by 3. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. The trick that I'm going to use to evaluate this infinite sum is written on the screen. Notice that the integral of x to the power n dx integrating from 0 to 1 is actually equal to 1 over n plus 1. So I'm going to write these fractions, the terms inside the infinite sum, in terms of integrals. For example, 1 over 4 so you can see will be the integral of x cubed with the same limits and then 1 over 7 will be x to the power 6 1 over 10 will be that of x to the power 9 of course for our first term which is just 1 I can also write that as 1 to be integral of some constant and for the sake of convenience for this time I'm going to take this constant to be equal to 1 so if I'm writing all the terms all the fractions in terms of integrals the sum will eventually equal to the integral of the following polynomial from 0 to 1 which is that 1 minus x cubed plus x to the power 6 minus x to the power 9 plus x to the power 12 minus x to the power 15 and so on dx the reason that this is useful because when I first saw the entries of each term they are all of the form say 3k plus 1 so if I write it in terms of integrals then I kind of switch shift each number down by one and they will all become multiples of three and it so happens that if i uh, treat it with integrals then i'm just integrating a power series because i'm having all the terms of x to the power multiples of three now for this power series it's actually geometric so I write this to be 1 over 1 minus negative x to the power 3 dx. The reason that I can do this is that this geometric series would definitely have a common ratio of uh, something between uh, minus 1 and 0. The reason is that I've restricted the x these x to be between 0 and 1 because I'm integrating under these limits within these limits and the common ratio is negative of such number cubed so it's it will also be falling between the range minus 1 and 1 so then I can use the formula of first term over 1 minus common ratio and so simplifying, we will have a very standard integral, which is 1 over 1 plus x cubed dx. And the way that I'm going to handle this is with the help of partial fractions. So notice that for the, for the denominator, 1 plus x cubed, it can be factorized into x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. So let's see how I can split that into partial fractions. So the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to let 1 over x cubed plus 1 to be all to be identically uh, identical to a constant over x plus 1 plus some linear expression over x squared minus x plus 1. Some kind of, I should say, this phrase proper rational functions 
so that the degree of the numerator will always be strictly less than that of the denominator. If I have a linear term below, like here, then the top on top of that, it must be something of degree zero, which is a constant. And similarly, for x squared minus x plus one, the degree is two. So the thing above it can only have degree at most one. Now, I'm going to simplify the right-hand side. And it so happens that I have the numerator to be x a times x squared minus x plus one plus bx plus c multiplied by x plus one. And so simplifying, I have a plus b times x squared, I just group terms. So for a squared, I have a plus b. And then for x, we have b plus c minus a. And for constant, we have a plus c. So you can see that we have the same denominator, bottom entry. And now we can compare like terms at the top. One comparing with these terms. And they must be equal for any x. So compare like terms. I have a plus b equals 0, b plus c minus a equals 0, and a plus c equals 1. Three equations, three unknowns, which should be solvable. If I add the first and the last equation, I have 2a plus b plus c equals 1. And if I subtract this by the second, then I will have 3a to be equal to 1, and so a equals 1 third. So I can proceed accordingly, and b equals to minus 1 over 3, and c equals 2 over 3. Now, what's the meaning of doing all of this? That means, according to what I've assumed, at the top, I can then proceed to integrate one third of one over x plus one plus minus one over three x plus two over three over x squared minus x plus one dx. And so the fra the fractions becomes integrable with our standard skills. So for the first integral, it's just one over x plus one times a constant which is fine because it will definitely become a natural log and the second one becomes slightly harder for the first one this is the, in the result of the integral and that's one third of log 2 for the second part it is minus one third x plus two thirds over x squared minus x plus one. Now for this, you may try to think about what will happen if I take the derivative of x squared minus x plus one, because I can imagine that part of this integral would become something in terms of natural log of x squared minus x plus one after integrating. So, the derivative of x squared minus x plus 1 is 2x minus 1, and that actually implies the ratio of the coefficient of x and the constant term, which would be 2 to minus 1. So when I have minus 1 third x over here, I actually want it to be added by 1 sixth, so that when the whole thing is divided by x squared minus x plus 1, I can say that this thing after integrating becomes natural log of the quadratic expression but it's too good to be true because we have two thirds instead of one sixth so I'm going to add an extra one half at the end to compensate 
And so at this point, I can say it's added by integral of 1 6 minus 1 over 6 multiplied by 2x minus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. And that's the, the thing that we, we're looking for. And then after that, it's going to be the part that I do not want, the half one half part. And that is one half times the remaining integral. Simply integrating one over x squared minus x plus one, nothing at the top. But before we handle that, let's do the second integral. And that is minus one six and the natural log of x squared minus x plus 1 between 1 and 0 and then 1 half of the last integral. It so happens that this term will always be 0 no matter when x is equal to either equal to 0 or 1. So it remains to handle the last integral. We've quickly finished the second integral. Now this one, I'm going to first do the process of completing the squares. So we have an integral of the form dx over some square plus three of plus a constant. And for integrals of this form, I'm going to bring in some trigonometric substitution, which is to let x minus one half to be this function, root three over two times tangent theta, because once I square it, I will then have the same constant next to the square inside the integral, tangent squared, not secant squared yet, but after adding 3 over 4, I'll have 3 quarters times tangent squared plus 1, and that is 3 fourths secant squared theta. And what's more is that if I take the differential from the thing I've left, like I've set out the theta, for the left hand side it becomes dx, while for the right hand side is root 3 over 2 secant square theta d theta. Oh, by the way, I have forgotten the limits. Now, under this new integral, I need new limits too. So, root 3 over 2 secant square theta d theta all divided by 3 quarters of secant square theta and for the limits let's do it case by case when x is 0 then tangent theta becomes minus 1 over root 3 and that is minus pi over 3 sorry pi over 6 it's a little mistake while for x equal to 1, then I have similar outcomes, but this time not minus. It's just plus, power for 6. And this substitution is really, is really useful because after doing so, I have 2 over root 3 d theta only inside the integral and so integrating I have 1 over root 3 and after integrating I only have theta because it's actually a constant inside so we can do the final calculations and our final answer would be pi over 3 root 3 for the second part so 
at last, the sum is actually equal to 1 third of log 2 added by pi over 3 root 3.